Hey everybody, Mohit here. I'm our developer advocate here at Salesforce. In this video, we'll learn how to apply dependency injection techniques to Apex. This technique can be very effective if you want to decrease the coupling between your Apex classes and their dependencies. Dependency injections allows us to write better, modular, flexible, and easily testable code. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we deep dive into dependency injection, let's understand what is dependency with a simple example. So let's start by looking at this Apex class ordering service. This class ordering service depends on the class PayPal service for initiating payments. Now the class PayPal service is tightly coupled to the ordering service. Now this dependency information you can also view by simply navigating to the Apex class via Salesforce user interface and then clicking on the show dependencies button. So as you can see, the ordering service clearly has this dependency on this uh, PayPal service class at this point. Now let's add in an additional business requirement that says one needs to use different payment providers based on the payment type input from the user. Now in this example, if the payment type is Stripe, the ordering service should initiate payment using Stripe, otherwise use uh, PayPal. So here's how I would typically modify the existing code to address the new requirements. We create different classes for each payment service and then use them in the ordering service. Now the problem with this is the pay method of the ordering service is tightly coupled to different payment services. So what this means is that if we have to make behavioral changes to the code in the future, like let's say adding a new payment provider on line 11 or changing the business logic on line seven, we'll have to retest this whole ordering service again after the code changes are done. Now let's iterate over the code design to use interfaces instead. So all we did was create an interface iPayment service and modify the PayPal service and Stripe service to implement these interfaces. Next, we simplified the payment method to be decoupled from the implementation of payment services. Now this was possible because we moved the logic that selected the correct implementation to the constructor of the ordering service. Now, though we have coupled payment service implementation from the pay method, the ordering service class still depends on the various payment services. We can iterate this further by injecting the implementation to use at runtime this time completely decoupling the classes. So this is our final iteration where we have ultimately eliminated the dependency on the payment service by using a class payment service injector that uses dependency injection. All right, now let us dig into the details of uh, this payment service injector class. So the class uses a query to fetch all of the different payment services configured via a custom metadata definition. Then we populate a map where we maintain different payment types and their corresponding Apex implementations. Let's look into the custom metadata types before we proceed further. Now, custom metadata types in Salesforce allows admins and developers to define and configure metadata that can be used in application code to define the application behavior. So for example, in this case, we have a custom metadata type called payment service that hold records for various payment service and their implementations. In the next lines of code, we use a type dot for name, a particular method in Apex that allows us to instantiate a class by using its name string without hard referencing the actual class names. Now carefully notice how we return the instance of the class. It's returned as an object. So now let's run the code via anonymous Apex, first with payment type Stripe. 
As you can see, it invoked payment method within Stripe service class. And on similar lines, we can now change it to default and test. Now with default, the PayPal service class was used at runtime. So now we are able to swap implementations at the runtime. Okay, to summarize, now we have established a loose coupling between the ordering service and the payment service. And we did it using the dependency injection and by using interfaces. Okay, uh, now a significant benefit from loose coupling the payment services this way is now our code is more reusable. So for example, if we were to add a third service, let's say an Apple Pay service or an Android Pay, all one would need to do is to implement the Apex class using the iPayment interface, and then simply add a new record in the custom metadata types with the payment method and its corresponding implementation. Now let's summarize what are the components of dependency injection in Salesforce. First, we need an interface. Next, we need one or more concrete classes that implement these interfaces. And then a custom metadata type that maps dependencies to its concrete classes. And finally, we need an injector class that performs the dependency injection. All right, now let's recap some of the benefits of dependency injection and some of the considerations and limitations, starting with benefits of dependency injection. So dependency injection allows you to write more reusable and modular code, as you just saw. Now, you can also swap implementations at runtime without code changes. And finally, the other benefit of using dependency injection techniques is it makes it easier to write tests using stub APIs in Apex. Now, let's look at some of the considerations and limitations. Now, dependency injection adds an additional overhead to your code design. And finally, since no compile time checks are done, it increases risk of runtime errors if not properly unit tested. So we recommend that you do not overdo dependency injection while you are writing code. To learn in depth about breaking runtime dependencies with dependency injection in Apex, Check out this blog post from my colleague Philippe Ozil on our developer.salesforce.com. The link for this is also shared in the video description. If you're looking for a generic dependency injection open source library with support for injecting Apex, Visual Force, Lightning, and Flows at runtime, check out ForceDI project. The link for the project is also shared in the video description below. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our Salesforce Developers YouTube channel.